my very quick, concise version of how I varnish. Number one, most important, apply any varnish, hit it with a tack cloth. It's available in Bunnings and other good hardware stores. And it's just a way of removing dirt, particles, hairs, dust, whatever, from the surface so that you're prepping it for uh, varnishing. It also leaves like a tiny, tiny, tiny little I don't know, like an electrostatic film or something. That just means the varnish goes on more evenly and more smoothly. So you've, you've wiped all the dust off. You've got a nice, dirty tack cloth. Uh, you're then varnishing. And for me, the varnish that I use, first step is, this is a Ganvar gloss varnish. It's a breathable varnish. So if, even if the painting is still a little bit wet in some of the deeper layers, not in mine, my paintings are quite flat, but even if it is a little bit wet, it still allows it to breathe. Um, you brush that on, and then once that's dry, that's when I give it the actual finish I want. So I will be hitting this one with a semi-gloss varnish, but no matter what you're going with, matte, semi-gloss, satin, or gloss, you always, always start with a gloss varnish, always. Because it's then something for the different uh, um, adhesiveness of the different varnishes to adhere to. They'll always adhere to a gloss varnish, but a matte varnish doesn't always go on right first try. Right, and what about, what brush would you use to put it on? Um, generally, a wide, flat brush with relatively stiff, but not too stiff bristles. And then before you use, you just get all of the loose hairs out. And if there is a hair in it, the easiest thing to do is just to use the corner of the brush to pick the hair up. So you come in and you just kind of use the brush to pick up the hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than having a hair on the painting. I think if it's a painting from a paintbrush, that's okay. If it's a painting from a varnishing brush, that's a mistake. So I'm using uh, a, this container, just pouring in how much I reckon I'll need. And then get my brush. Is it very important that you do it in one go? Yeah, especially with this varnish, because this varnish activates itself. And what that means is if you apply this varnish to this varnish dry, it'll make the dry varnish wet. So you can only hit one coat of this, but it's breathable and very easy to remove, which is why I use it. So you have to, you have to do it in one. Okay. So hopefully if I start here, you can see it working its magic all of those colors just come ah. so if you come over this side you can really see what i'm talking about half varnished half not can you see that there oh yeah and you can see it can be quite vigorous because you really want to get in there it's going to have little micro bubbles and it's quite important with when you've got those black colors much more important to pick up the hairs and little bits of dust and so on because that'd be so obvious. I tend to underestimate how much varnish I use, so again, just just pour some more out and then just go at it again. Yeah. And once this is varnished, I'll leave it for an hour or two uh, so that I'm not kicking up dust onto it. So just walking around and so on. We'll, um, we'll leave... Uh, dust particles in it. Mm. Sometimes uh, you'll see things that you didn't realize were there until you varnish it. Some, you know, some of the colors won't be quite right. You just have to, it's a handmade object. There's, there's nothing you can really do about it. And hope that there's no bugs because something in the chemicals, bugs and fruit flies absolutely love this varnish. And I've come in sometimes with, you know, three or four bugs sitting, <laughs> stuck in the barn. Oh, my God. And you just have to very carefully remove them with a pair of tweezers and hope that uh, <laughs> it's too obvious, yeah. Yeah, right. But as you say, that's a good point, you know. It's a handmade object. Yeah. yeah. And it's not a perfect thing. No. It's not a machine-made thing. No, so it isn't. That's the beauty of it, really, when yeah. it comes down to it. And I think there's also something maybe like a little bit romantic when you do see hairs from from the brush of someone who's made it you know like that's just a sign of like that's like the process yeah i think yeah. so and i think it's um i think it's a really good thing you know if you look at 
old masters and so on, well, maybe not old masters, but sort of impressionists and so on, you'll see bits of dirt and you'll see insects and you'll see all sorts of things because they painted those things outside and the wind picks something up and it blows into it and they were more than happy to let it, um, more than happy to let it stay in there, so yeah. So once it's varnished and dry, which will probably be tomorrow, I will then come back in with the finishing varnish, which in this case is a golden archival varnish. This is a semi-gloss. Semi-gloss works quite well for, for these. And because it's sprayed on rather than brushed on, you get a distribution of fine particles, which almost act like noise wood on a film. So you're breaking up any brush marks that are in that uniform background and letting, sort of giving the eye an easier time. You don't have that harsh gloss line of where a brush stroke has been a bit too hard or, or whatever, mm -hmm. and it gives it a more uniform flat finish. When you want to finish with a matte or a satin or a semi-gloss or whatever, you always have to start with gloss and then go to the finish you want. You can't start matte and go gloss, but you can start gloss and go matte, and making it gloss just gives the varnish something to stick to in a uniform manner. So interesting. That's all. Oh, thanks for sharing your secrets. Pleasure.